now tune in to the OSINT Curious Podcast. All right. Thank you for uh, joining us. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thank you for joining us for another edition of the OSINT Curious Project. Uh, I am joined here by a number of people who shouldn't be on the screen, but that are because I screwed up somehow. But I'll go around the table for the members of the people who are here from OSINT Curious of Dutch. Want to say hi? Hi, everyone. Dutch. Sector. Hi, everybody. All right. Technozet. Hi, everyone. And everyone else on here is uh, like a junior uh, OSINT member right now. So you can see Eric, Ginger T, all them. So we had some some technical difficulties, mostly my stuff doing. Uh, our guest this week is uh, is Owen Sweeney or OSINT Essentials. Say hi. Hi, everybody. Excellent. I appreciate you being here and making the time. I know that there was some some time constraints and stuff like that, so uh, we appreciate it. Uh, okay. So let's get into it. Uh, OSINT Essentials, uh, you know, we, we wanted to have you on because we know that there's a website that you direct people for kind of free tools that have been used. How did you kind of get into OSINT or uh, Open Source Intelligence stuff? Uh, how I got into it originally was about eight years ago. I was, uh, I've been in journalism since about 1998, 99. And uh, through the, the the usual kind of mainstream channels, worked in broadsheet magazine, online journalism, all that sort of stuff. And I was asked uh, by a friend of mine who was involved in the setting up of a company called Storyful in Dublin. Mm-hmm. And they were one of the early uh, companies to go looking for what was kind of inelegantly known as UGC, user-generated content. In other words, amateur online content. And part of the appeal early on with that was we knew there was – always going to be somebody, cl- almost always going to be somebody closer than a, a journalist when something big happened. And there was this huge reservoir of great visual material. So some somebody, a couple of guys thought, well, wouldn't it be a great idea if we could actually make an entire agency out of this? So they asked me to join. Um, I was very fortunate to work with, with some great people. Malachi Brown has gone on to do fantastic work with the New York Times, for example. And... Uh, the thing with Storyful at the time was a lot of this stuff was new and we were doing this out of necessity. You know, we, we had to verify whether stuff was real or not. We had to be able to look into the sources and find the actual people behind it so we could get uh, publication permission and so on. So we were kind of making it up as we went along to an extent. And I spent six years with Storyful. We, we of course, wrote on the back of other people's great work as well, but we developed a lot of techniques and stuff ourselves. And after about six years there, I joined First Draft, uh, not not for profit. And I was, I had always kind of gravitated towards training and mentoring anyway. And with First Draft, I had a chance to do that almost full time. And uh, that lasted until about last November. And we just had different priorities. I wanted to focus much more tightly on actual training and education. So uh, I've gone on to become well, pretty much independent, freelance, whatever you want to call it when you don't have a real job. <laughs> no, that's awesome. That that that's a that's an amazing kind of background in regards to a lot of stuff. And I know, especially for this, the the members of this group, a lot of the stuff that are a lot of the reason why we kind of formed a lot of this uh, this this style of getting together and talking about stuff was because there was so much bad information. There was a there was a there was not a credible level of verification in regards to a lot of stuff. Some people were teaching tools, but they weren't teaching actual technique, and so we wanted to go through and kind of do something similar. So that's amazing. That's an awesome backstory. I appreciate you sharing. Yeah, so, I, have, I have an additional question. You, um, you telling you teach people uh, open source intelligence skills. Um, well, I do that myself also. So, oh, I find the hardest part in being an open source intelligence practitioner, or at least uh, a teacher instructor. Sorry, I, I missed a little bit. You get there's a little bit of cut in the audio. Okay. Um. So, what uh, do you find the hardest when you teach other sh- open source intelligence skills? Um. Yeah, it's an interesting question. I think one of the hardest things, and one of the, one of the reasons I listen to you guys every week, one of the hardest things is staying current because, you know, I the website really was the idea behind that was that I wanted to be able to have. You know, I, I teach a lot of workshops and stuff, and I want to be able to have all of this, all of these free or almost free tools just in one place so that, you know, if I do workshops, uh, boot camps, whatever you want to call them, 
I always hope people will follow up with me because I say to them, you know, if we go back in six months and do the same slide deck again, some of it's going to be obsolete. Some of it's going to be superseded by other stuff. So I wanted to have stuff in one place where I could easily update it. There are a lot of great collections of tools and things online. I've deliberately kept OSINT Essentials a bit slimmer so that I can try to curate it weekly or every maybe 10 days or so, rip out stuff that's no longer current, add stuff that's new and improved, and, and so on. Uh, so really that, yeah, the question was, what's the most difficult thing? And I definitely think keeping up to date, you know, we had the whole Facebook thing uh, recently. You'll see there on the, the homepage that I've still got a section kind of warning people on that because it is pretty much a moving platform at the moment. Uh, so trying to make sure that you're giving people accurate and up-to-date information is the most important thing. I have to stress as well that I, I call it OSINT Essentials. And I mentioned this in a post somewhere. That was almost tongue in cheek because, you know, I, I I don't think having these tools makes you an OSINT practitioner. Sure. Uh, but I used to refer to these things as OSINT basics. And I found sometimes you teach a workshop and people were very meh about the whole thing because they'd be like, oh, I know the basics. I don't need any of this. And it was purely a semantic game. And I started saying OSINT essentials and you found suddenly people were coming with different preconceptions. I think that was one of my favorite tweets that uh, I saw from you uh, was, you know, the the feeling that some people in the OSINT community just need one more tool or one more tip or one more thing to become digital Sherlock's. And I, I, always, yeah. I always respected that because I thought it, it's kind of going counter to what OSINT really should be. The tools and all that are just an aggregate for going through and collection of data to get to the question. And, and as Dutch OSINT puts, put, or Nico put, but so eloquently, you know, it's always about the question. It's like, what are you trying to go through and find out in regards to this stuff? And this, all this other stuff just, just helps get you to that, but it, it really is a mindset. So, yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I, that's one of the reasons I wanted to put these tools out there was to make it a little bit more approachable to people who are maybe dabbling in it for the first time. Because one of the things I stress over and over and over again is that, you know, whatever the big platforms do, whatever governments and people legislating do, this whole problem of online disinformation and so on can never be adequately dealt with from the supply side. Sure. Uh, I think like chasing down diseases and trying to eradicate them, where, whereas I think you know, teaching people basic hygiene and getting mass vaccination and stuff like that is in the end a more effective approach. And, the, and for the same reason, I would like if everybody in the world, I, I joke about it, but I'm partly serious, if I could only teach one thing, but I could get everybody in the world to instinctively and reflexively do it every time they get a piece of content, it'd be reverse image search. Mm. And, you know, among the OSINT community, it's almost like a joke. This, these people don't even know how to reverse image search. But you would be amazed how many people don't. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, and especially because um, you just said you have a background in journalism, uh, which yeah. I don't, and I come across more and more uh, journalists because I'm currently working at Bellingcat. And in my opinion, uh, I was really amazed by the amount of journalists lacking skills on basic open source intelligence, uh, intelligence gathering. And, and, and I was recently, I was at a, a, a big news media outlet in the Netherlands and they are just in the beginnings of, of practicing open source intelligence. Uh, what's your opinion on that? Because they give us the news every day. And in my experience now, last two years, I'm, I'm really, well, I was only mount baffled when I heard most uh, news redactions don't even do it as uh, on a day-to-day -day basis just gather information online yeah I'm, I'm, I'm constantly taken aback by it and i go into newsrooms i don't want to hit on anybody individually because i think it's failing right across the industry and uh, i still go into newsrooms where i meet with intelligent uh, hard-working journalists but again like i say the the almost almost the joke you know and i i mentioned reverse image search and people go wow that's amazing Whereas to anybody who does even the most basic online uh, open work, it's like the first thing in your, it's let's get this out of the way first. But yeah, the most basic stuff, uh, the ability to sort of look at two or three different online accounts from the same person, uh, the ability to, to manipulate the basic uh, most popular mapping applications 
is very often not there. Uh, I spend a lot of time building little exercises and games and stuff like that to just get people familiar with, you know, how to zoom and rotate and tilt a map and that sort of stuff. So, again, like I said, one of the reasons I'm doing what I'm doing now and doing it independently is I wanted to laser focus in on training and education of the absolute fundamentals of this. And uh, now, at the same time, there's to be sequestered slightly that people think, well, there's journalism and then there's OSINT. Whereas I think journalists should all have the basic OSINT skills. And, but at the same time, it's great if people who have OSINT skills have the journalistic fundamentals of, you know, not trusting a single source and always double checking figures and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, to totally agree on that. And um, do you, besides uh, being a, an instructor teacher, do you uh, actually do cases yourself? I haven't done anything um, even reasonably comprehensive in, in terms of doing a case recently because I simply don't have time. I would mm -hmm. love to be doing it all the time because, of course, it keeps your skills sharp and current as well. But I've just been... I counted up the other day in the past 18 months, I've been through 29 countries doing this sort of stuff. And, you know, I think somebody has to try to mop up all the, the, the very kind of the people with the lowest skills. I'm happy to do that. Uh, but it does mean I don't get time to go after a lot of more comprehensive and uh, complex stuff. You, you, you mentioned that you do stuff for Bellingcat, and I look on with envy at a lot of what Bellingcat's doing. Yeah, well, uh, and, and they are they are also struggling every day. So trust me, we all yeah. do. Um, and that comes to me to a question I ask to each and every guest we have on. Uh, within the OSINT spectrum field, what is it you want to learn? Oh, so many, so much, so many things. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I, I would say I would love, if I had the time, I would love to get more into the technical side of things. I look at, like sort of stuff that Kirby does and other people. And again, I would, uh, pe people like um, Jake Krebs and that, and just say, you know, I'd love to automate more of this stuff and I would love to be able to, because I'm not I'm not a coder. Uh, my my technical strength would be when I am when I am working with tech people to be able to ask them intelligent <coughs> questions, ask them the right questions so that they could then do the tech stuff. But I've never really had the time that I'd love to have, I'll say, for example, the basics of Python. I'd love to be able to go to GitHub and get some of these amazing tools that seem to be popping up on a, a weekly basis. Uh, so that would be my next step if I if I did have the, the luxury of the time to do it. Yeah, yeah, like we all do. Time. Yeah. I think that's the next hack we need to OSIN. How do we find time on the internet? Yeah. <laughs> We slow down time or do the bullet time thing so we can do three things at once. Is, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Sector, TechnoZet, you guys have any questions or anything else? I know we have a couple more questions on here, but but uh, as we kind of go along, we want to make sure we don't lose you guys as well. Yeah, I, I did uh, actually uh, have a question because um, well, we were in contact last year because I knew you, um, you were doing some stuff for, for first draft. Um, yeah. you know, you've been working for uh, Storyful, uh, but now also the Google News Initiative um, yeah. in India. And uh, uh, Dutch and uh, Nico, uh, he already um, asked it a little bit, but do you see a, a really big positive change in um, verification and fact-checking now? Um, we know that the level is low, but do you see that there's a really big change that everybody now realizes, like, okay, we really need to step up our game, so to say. Yeah, specifically in India? Or? No, just, just all over. I, knew, I know you are doing uh, the project in India now for the Google uh, News Initiative. Um, but no, in general, with your trainings and, and everything. Well, obviously, I would hope that that's the case. And, and I do think that in certain places, it certainly has been the case. There's, there's at least a hugely raised... Uh, uh, an appreciation among journalists. Uh, one of the, the most satisfying things I've been involved in over the past year, again, it was with, uh, with the Google News Initiative initially, but it's taken on a huge local impetus, is the work in Indonesia. Uh, we've worked with a group there called Mafindo, who are a local uh, 
fact checking, debunking kind of group. And they set up a project called Check Fact Out. So just in, in Bahasa Indonesia, it's fact checking, which was all around the Indonesian elections. But there's some amazing people working on that. Uh, just the local uh, momentum that it's taken on has been incredible. And I, de I definitely think there is, you know, it, it's very hard to gauge how effective some of it is. But some of the best work, again, is being done by small organizations. In India, To just to take that as an example, there are people like, um, there's Alt News and Boom Live in India, who are these, I don't need to mind me saying it, quite small, independent fact-checking groups, and they do incredible work. And I think they outshine a lot of their bigger uh, counterparts. That's awesome. We, uh, by the way, um, we, we do have a question from the um, from the audience. Um, I'm yeah. just not sure um, what is meant here. Um, the question is, uh, is there any thought to all the ocean community to get together and have an ocean standard, or is it time and scheduling just too much? Um, yeah, I'm not sure what Ginger means with that. Um, so, I, I, know, I know one of... The end standards or something like that. The yeah, it, it's tough because so I know uh, Micah, who's not on the the webcast today, but normally is. I know he has his uh, two projects, Orcs and Yoga, to go to kind of do something similar to that. I think that there is something um, in regards to taking the sources of information and making them standardized to what we can pull out of there. Um, so yeah, it's tough because it, it is it is a very very time consuming thing, and scheduling is maybe not the issue. I think it's the amount of information that we get day to day that kind of inundates all the searches and stuff. We can always go through and say, you know, this is enumeration. You know, we can we can check the Venmo stuff, whatever, and that's for payment side stuff. I, I think that OSINT is so fractured anyway because you have human Sockment, you've got dark web stuff, you've already got so many different outlets to go through and get information for it and then the the subgroups of information or like even the news articles or you know the the specific things you get from social media whatever make make it difficult to go through and standardize where you put information and how you pivot off that but i think we all use a lot of that information and then just kind of pivot to where we get to so it, it's tough to get a standardized thing because I think I think you know I don't even think there's agreement specifically on what on, on a definition of OSINT. Sure. Um, oh yeah. No, and there's not even a definition of the name. It's OSINT yeah. or OSINT or Open Source Intelligence. You know, so even in just that basic structure of of, of how we call it to each other is is yeah. something where you know it, it's a little difficult to get. To get. Yeah, because if if you, if you go to my website as a, as a complete outsider, a complete beginner, and you look at it. You know, I can't tell you that's OSINT because it doesn't it doesn't involve any of the the, the real tech side of stuff. It doesn't involve dark web. Uh, it's 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 a jumping off point. I hope it's a reasonably good jumping off point, but that's all it is. Yeah, oh, I no, think I, I think it's a really good starting point. So um, yeah. And and then there's another question in regards to the tools. Uh, you know, uh, someone in the chat is asking, isn't standardization kind of against OSINT ideas? It will end up becoming a tool output. So there there is something to say. You know, is the standardization going along the lines of what you're actually using it? Is it a you know is it a command line thing that only parses certain information, or is it a GUI that you pull from you know like follow walks and some of that where that is the standardization? You're just getting information from that. From that tool, so it's something to think about. But yeah, I, I, I it is something to, uh, to to kind of get into. Yeah. Well, let's go on to the news, I guess. If no one has a question, and maybe we have a question additionally, and then we'll pop it in. Yeah, and, and we've got some news stuff to go through, and so you know, obviously, we we would love your input on this, uh, Ian, as, as as well. So just make sure you kind of jump in there. Um, First things first, I did want to go through and just say, you know, I, I, I know you have a medium uh, space for your blogs and stuff. You know, what is OSINT essential? You know, and, and even the Facebook apocalypse, that's one of one of my, my favorite in the in the last couple of months where we just go through and kind of round out what's happening in OSINT. And like you're saying, just how much things have changed just since May. And we're only in July at this point. So, uh, you know, for everyone out there who's looking into it, you know, check out uh, at OSINT Essentials for his medium uh, blog spaces as, as well. Uh, I've also been quiet oh, on my 
on the Twitter, the associated Twitter and Facebook because I've been on the road so much recently. I, I saw you had uh, uh, Instagram as well. Is that right? It doesn't look like there's a yeah. whole lot of stuff on there, but I mean, I, I just I I just decided. Look, if I'm going to be using that domain name, I may as well grab the few most prominent uh, social media 100%. platforms. You know, yeah. just, just to try to avoid uh, confusion. Yep, I, I understand. Okay, uh, getting into some of the other blog sell stuff. So we had um, a, another blog that came out, How to Search Effectively and Efficiently, Part 1, Basic Principles, Tips, and Tricks for OSINT. And this comes out from, uh, from Lauren. All right. Yeah, it's correct. It's from Lawrence. It's 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 also um, just like um, the Essentials just told us. It's it's the basic steps how uh, to set up your browser. How does Google in in essence in its basic beginning work, and then some basic tricks to do it. And it's a, it's supposed to be a series, so this is part one. So yeah. uh, we can expect a part two, maybe a part three, and and it will just give you these pointers to get you started yeah no it's a it's a really really good kind of deep dive into the beginnings of stuff you know getting into Google translate and making sure that you can set that stuff up um, and the wayback machine I know those are two of maybe the only real tools that I used when I was doing kind of the trace labs um, OSINT CTF stuff is it, it, we you know with the global CTF stuff there was a lot of stuff that was not English based so Using Google Translate was a huge thing that I had to go through and kind of walk through just to, to make sure that I was on the right track with stuff. And the Wayback Machine also uh, gave us some, some information in regards to past uh, missing persons reports. So a lot of this stuff is really good. Also, I think, it's, I think it's valuable because there are so many people who are being exposed to OSINT and coming into either the information security stuff or like you were saying with the uh, journalism people. It, it, it really does have a place where we need to go through and take a step back and say, remember the basics, or if you're new to this, this is how you jump into it. So it's it's a really good blog piece. So I, I recommend everyone check it out, and not just because it's part of us and curious. So, all right. Okay, moving on to the next piece. We had a, a, a tool that we were kind of, it's a go find who. I, I think someone put this in here. Anybody want to talk about that? Nobody wants to talk about it. That's okay. Well, 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 yeah, yeah. I had one in the chat. Well, um, it's it was tweeted out, and I picked it up, and it basically is another uh, resource of uh, of sources you can uh, sure. use to search social networks or uh, find uh, data leaks or paste um, on persons, and it gives you. Um, like these flow chart kind of things like Bazell uh, had on his website, but Bazell is kind of putting things behind his um, customer uh, wall. Uh, yep. So you see more and more other people stepping up and basically providing us what Michael Bazell provided us with all these years, which I really found was awesome. But now, well, I think... Um, Picking up, Intel X is picking up. Go find who is another source, and uh, I, um, this was specifically tweeted out because they have uh, a nice write-up on how to use those base sixty-four coding on Facebook graph searches, mm -hmm. and yeah. it goes a little bit more in depth on how to build those actual search queries instead yeah, cool. of just using those um, out-of-the-box um, um, browser extensions on which you don't have to think on your own and because i think it's really important especially when things break you need to figure out how they how to get them working again and sure. especially um, when you're a, a teacher or an instructor you need to tell others how things work so it's really essential to figure out how these things work and this was a nice, a nice uh, website who told us how things work because i really don't like it when people figure things out and then scream all over the internet i know how it works but i'm not telling you then just don't say it at all that's my personal opinion i, I definitely you take your point about people knowing how to do it when things break that's that's so crucial uh because you know my experience things will always break when you need the most and I, I actually did a few days of a session uh, couple, not so long ago in Taiwan, 
and people were so happy with uh, all the uh, the Facebook tools. And I think we wrapped up the final session literally hours before the, as I referred to, the Facebook ellipse struck. So I had a whole bunch of people had just been introduced to these. They were all happy and all excited to start using them. And suddenly, I'd say before I even got the chance to use them in the practical sense, they were gone. Yep. Yep. And and yeah. that that type of thing happens, you know, either because of uh, abuse or just because of you know inability to go through and keep up with it or anything. But yeah, once yeah. once there's a tool out there and you get comfortable with it, you know, and it goes away, it's it's a, it's a true detriment to a lot of the stuff. And and this looks like a neat uh, website just because it does have a lot of the the search engine capabilities, people leak IP network address stuff, and and I did want to point out that it had a lot of the the same kind of flowchart stuff as. Um, Bazell's stuff, um, but they do mention in there, and they do point to uh, Intel Technique. So I, 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 this is one of the better examples of, hey, we've got it, we use it, but we're going to point out who actually, you know, kind of brought it to the table and stuff. So I, I, I want to make sure that no one thinks this is is, is stealing work from. No, him. no, no, exactly. They they give credit where credit is due. Yep, hundred percent. Awesome. Okay, uh, let's see. We on to the next thing here. Which is uh, uh, there was an article that came out uh, attacking the heart of German industry. Yeah. Um, well, I came across this. Um, I don't even know where I picked it up. Probably just Twitter because I scan Twitter all the time because sure. I like to click shit on Twitter. Yep. Um, this is a really good article on uh, Germany was attacked by a group of hackers, and um, in this article, it's a really good in depth. Um, Right up and visually uh, really good on how the steps, each steps they've taken to investigate how the hackers went to work, how they um, um, uh, exp uh, um, let's see uh, how they deliver their exploits and how they uh, where they were after, and every breadcrumb on the crumb path they. It was so well, well written, and I think it's really interesting because most of the time, uh, people I come across who do open source intelligence are looking at uh, people, or at least finding people, a picture of a people, or a car, or a hill, or something. And this is more what uh, people, I think, call technical OSINT, but I think when you look at the malware industry or the hacking industry, uh, open source intelligence has been there for years, or for instance, pen testers. And then you come immediately more into the technical open source intelligence field and cybercrime, for instance. Um, this is this is more a write-up on that kind of field of work when it comes to open source intelligence. And it was really, it, it's a long read, and I like long reads because um, um, Long reads are most of the time really in depth on how you can uh, make sense of certain types of code and decode it or encode it or just juggle with it within, for instance, CyberChef and make sense of pieces of code again and then pivot into it and maybe find an email address or uh, uh, a gamer tag which you uh, pivot into. And, um, goes in depth on a, a APT, a persistent threat group, who are into um, the industrial espionage of um, the gaming industry most of the time. Yeah. No, it's, it's really valuable to read it, and I think also the visuals around it tells the story um, uh, way more attractive than just plain text. Um, it makes it I, sometimes I'm a I'm a really visual guy, so I like it when people tell a story by uh, making graphs and telling us, well, we went in from this step and then we pivoted into this step and then we saw these three dots pop up and they, those connect to this and why? Because we can, in, let's say, code. So this article tells you a story like that. So I yeah. want to point it out. Really good for people who are getting into open source intelligence as well to have kind of a breakdown of things like this because it gives them ideas of what to go through and search for. And just seeing the ability for them to take one piece of code and then reverse that or pivot off that to go through and get more information. And like they say in the article, going through virus total to go through and try to upload and see what else has worked. 
uh, eventually find a game forge and then kind of pivoting off that stuff to go through and see what not only happened, but then how the APC is using infrastructure all over the internet to go through and to you know, launch attacks from. So it, it's really, really neat, especially when there is a focus and a breakdown because it does give you the ability to look at things and say, okay, that's how it works, so I should be looking for things like that in the future, or I remember when that worked. So yeah, that, yeah I don't know. Yeah, and of course, for the people on the podcast, we will put a link to this article in the show notes. Like we do with all other things we discuss, there will be links in the show notes. Absolutely. We will not go through and abandon you. Okay. <laughs> all right, on to the next thing. Uh, Intelligence X. Uh, Intel X, uh, they have been kind of one of the... They, they've been one of the groups that's been most uh, prominent in regards to saying that they want to go through and put a lot more tools out since... Uh, Bazell's tools kind of went away and there's been some other stuff that's been happening so um, I think one of the reasons why we included this is because there are some custom uh, search engines from uh, is it no privacy and he put that stuff out yep that's no privacy he uh, created a custom search engine for telegram and they include it yeah the telegram yep. one is awesome I really really like the interface on that stuff and it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's just searchable you just Put whatever you in, and it just pulls all the stuff back. It's really nice. Yeah, big shout out to uh, Francesco Poldi, non privacy. He builds a lot of uh, tools like Twins, and also he's working on a closed source project still for Telegram. But this is open source already, and uh, Intelligence Six features it. So this is where I think you can see the open source community helps out each other because um, sometimes I see people. Um, I recently uh, was in a tweet draft where people were annoyed that there were no things shared. And I was like, well, we don't share. I think we share everything we know on skills. Yeah. And of course, we keep certain gems to ourselves because if you don't keep those, then Facebook will detect them and break. Sometimes you need to take a certain gem for yourself, but not to keep it from the public to keep it from others trying to break it. Yeah. I think that's the difference. But again, intelligence yeah. as well, a really good job on uh, picking up and making a, a really valuable set of tools for ocean practitioners to use. Can you say something, Owen? Well, I just think that's an important point that, you know, most of us, I think, uh, you guys, myself anyway, I would love everybody to know everything. But, but there is that slight danger, and Bazel mentioned it in, his, uh, in one of his podcasts as well, that uh, you know, when the new tools come out, if we go shouting from the, the hilltops about these great new tools that can now circumvent what Facebook has stopped people doing, uh, well, what are you doing? You're broadcasting the fact that there's a new way to do it and you're alerting whoever wants to shut those things down. Sure. Any sort of malicious actor or anyone else, you know, it's it's the same thing. And I, I, I know he kind of talked about this as well with like the have I been pwned thing, you know, people who are malicious and doing the breaches are submitting that as kind of, you know, some sort of award or, or, or parody of, of points for that stuff because it's then published and then it's, it's kind of propagated. And if there is that unfortunate duality where you, where you have open source information or whatever, and you can go through and use it. And we hope that it's being used for good, but at the same time, if malicious actors are using the same thing that we're doing for internal pen tests or for, searching or verification it's it goes both ways so that's, that's that's why you have to have the people who are out there fighting for the good stuff so yeah it, it, it makes sense it just yeah i don't know it's tough not 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 to the point where i think we should close everything down i still believe there should be open sharing with a lot of the information the tools we use and all that because it, it's it's essential but yeah it, it is one of those things where you know and it happens more in information security with like the uh uh, the kingfishers and the things like that which are automated or set you know this uh social engineering toolkit and things like that where you know you can use it for your internal protections because once you know what's vulnerable then you can sure it up and you can protect it but yeah it also allows for other people to go through and make modifications to their own stuff so it's 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 something that uh ethically we have to go through and i think take a look at someday and it as well just my thought totally uh, agree. What? Are you yelling no. at me? 
Yeah, but you didn't hear it, so I'm not going to repeat it. Oh, okay. It was bad word. <laughs> okay. there, is, uh, there is one question that I get constantly from people who come to workshops, and they say, so by teaching us how to do all this stuff and how to combat fakes and disinformation, isn't there a danger that you, some people in this room are just learning how to create better disinformation? Yep. Yes, of course there is, but that's, that's the risk you have to take and hope that on balance you're, you're improving things rather than exacerbating them. Especially with the advent of no skill deep fake stuff, uh, where you yep. can literally just put up the the uh, the video that you produced and then put the image that you want to you know cast over it, and then you could have Donald Trump telling everybody you know smart things. I don't know what it is, but you know just there are other things that you can have uh, maybe people say they wouldn't normally do. So yeah, it is it is an area of interest as well for me, but it's yeah, it's something. Um, okay, so moving on, big shout out to OSINT.team. I just wanted to go through and show this because I think a lot of the resources that a lot of people get um, kind of do all end up in this place. Uh, Gonzo on the board over there is a huge help. Uh, he's actually one of the admins that was just joined. Uh, also putting this back up for OSINT.team. It's only been back up since I think July 13th. So if for some reason you were waiting to get back on to OSINT.team, um, it is it, it is back up and running. So we wanted to give them a shout out as well because I think um, a lot of people that came over from you know the uh, the Slack space and the Rocket Chat space are in uh, OSINT curious now because of those environments that we all kind of grew up together in and stuff. So um, it does offer the single sign on. Uh, I think. Twitter was having some problems, but GitHub is also on there. So if you have, again, if you were on before, you got dumped out and you want to get back in, now is a, a really good time. So I just wanted to give that a shout out. But also, like I said, specifically the resources channel, really, really, really good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, uh, almost a number one uh, place to go. 100%. Besides Twitter. Yeah, and a, hu a huge range of stuff as well. Like I, I'm on it daily and, you know, I'm mostly on there. Uh, the biggest benefit I get out of it is somebody saying, hey, what about this new tool? Obviously, you don't just add the tool straight away. You go and check if it serves your purposes. But that's really helpful to me. And also, then there's a whole lot of technical stuff, which is way beyond my current abilities. But I kind of note things and say, well, you know, another, another one for the bucket list. Yeah, no, 100%. And it is. It's one of those things where you can look at stuff and be like, okay, when I've got free time, I want to pull down Sherlock or I want to go through and pull down this. And it's not even just the command line tools. There are a lot of interactive things that I know that Gonzo's found for, you know, for like this uh, tweet map and things. And they're just a, a lot of really neat information. There's a new fake name generator. So it's just, it, it's, it, it's a constant fire hose of new information and stuff. Okay, moving on to OSINT Combine, uh, Instagram Explorer. Yeah, I think Technichette should talk about this because she is, so our, she is our Instagram girl. I don't think she said anything. So. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a little bit quiet. I had a very long day today. No, so it's okay. Quiet. So, yes, I really, really like this tool. So we wrote a blog on how to search Instagram, um, published about a week ago. And one of the things, uh, one of my OSINT friends, she sent me a video explaining how to search for older photos and videos tagged to a specific location. So there was this very comprehensive mathematical sum you needed to solve in order to get a specific number. Wow. It was a very weird trick, uh, but it worked. Um, but for some reason I was playing around with it and I didn't get the results I was looking for anymore. And then at the magical moment, OSINT combined appeared and they've got this amazing website. So you're looking up a specific location, for example, Kansas City. Just pick any link, a new tab will open. You will be copying the URL of the Instagram location. Yes, you will be going back to the OSINT combine. Close down this pop-up. How do I close the pop-up? Uh, just click on the oh. word black. Oh, yeah, there you go. Then paste it into the find photos box and adjust the date to, let's say, January 1st, 2015. Just pay attention that in Instagram, you cannot go any further than August 24th, 
2011, because that is the date Instagram went live. And if you scroll down and you go to most recent, mm -hmm. scroll down a little bit more, there you go, click on the first photo. And you will now see that it's been posted on December 31st, 2014. Right there. There you go. Wow. So it's an amazing opportunity to, let's say if you're um, investigating uh, a protest that had been going on a couple of years ago, and you're looking into any social media posts that have been posted from the location where uh, the demonstration was going on, maybe you will be finding those photos with this tool. It's very helpful. So does it take it and work backwards from that date? Because I'm not seeing anything posted on, the, yes. on January 1st, but okay. So that gives That's it probably because there's right. nothing posted on January 1st on this specific date. And then it goes backwards, yes. Gotcha. That's awesome. Yes. And I talked to the guys because um, uh, at first you would be able to search way past 2011. You can go way back. But it doesn't make any sense because you won't be able to find any photos posted before that date. So they did just did it now. Um, and as you might see now, if you're looking at the photo dates, you can only go back to 2011 now. Yep. yep, 2011 right there. Awesome. That is really cool. Yes. And we're <laughs> actually writing a new blog with some Instagram hints and tips, like a part two of the part one we've wrote. Um, so we're getting a long way uh, and hopefully publish soon. Very cool. Right. What were you gonna say, I'm sorry? And this will be featured in there too. Yeah, I just wanted to add something because I know you, you, do, you do so much good stuff on Instagram. Um, something I tweeted about a few weeks ago, but I don't know if it really got picked anywhere. I just stumbled across a website called Skimogram. And the thing I liked about this Actually, is that you can filter for for video or for photos or for both. Yes, please show it. Because I found it on your website. Uh, yeah. And I've actually added it into the blog too, because it's very Great. helpful to just search for videos. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you a funny thing about this uh, that what, what it brought to mind was uh, back in the days when I was working for Storyful. Uh, you may remember this Ram Is that you? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> <laughs> I just put in hashtag OSINT and then apparently like my doppelganger came up. So, you know, <laughs> I'm still prettier. I'm still prettier. I... But, but I mean, you, you, oh, may yeah. remember, you may remember takes a gram feed. That yes. which was, I know they're like, those were the ones that was pretty much killed by uh, by API changes. Uh, but back okay. in the storyful, we accidentally found that Gramfeed had this same ability, but it must have been, I guess, an, an unreleased uh, or an unpublicized beta feature or something, because one of the guys accidentally found me searching for something that if you hit uh, V on the keyboard, it suddenly filtered everything for video, and if you hit P, it filtered for photos, and hit A and went back to to all. And of course, you know, that was a private or profit news agency I was working for. So we didn't exactly um, shout that from the rooftops. Sure. But uh, it, yeah, it, uh, Grandfeed had that feature, but most people didn't know it had. And I and since the demise of Grandfeed, I had never seen it again until I stumbled across Skimogram. Awesome. That That is very cool. I'm glad that we could look at that stuff and find, you know, really horrible pictures of myself on there. So that's, that's great news. <laughs> Yeah, and um, someone of the attendees just pointed out when you you look for be a time zone thing uh, also when you look at the 1st of January, it could be the 31st of December or somewhere else. That's true. Right. So, yeah. 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 Good so, point. We were talking about Instagram. I have a little thing and I cannot figure it out. So maybe posting it here, somebody with a bright mind will maybe... Tell us what it is. I will post the link in the chat so you can copy it, Gins. Okay. So I was going through Instagram and I like digging Instagram because it's a very simple platform, but it offers you a lot of search possibilities. So I found this page because at the bottom of Instagram.com, you see all of these about us, support, press, API, jobs, etc. Yep. So there was hashtags. So if you click on hashtags, this is what you will see. It'll be a number from zero to 10. Just click on, let's say nine. You will now have to select another number, let's say four. 
I don't get where these results are coming from. That, so yeah. Apparently, there's a Reddit post, which dates back two years ago, uh, with people trying to figure out what is going on here. Why are we seeing these specific hashtags? Why do you have to select a number? Those numbers don't come back in the source code. They don't come back into the URL. It's not mentioned in a post or in a comment or I have absolutely no clue where this is coming from. So well, I, I do see care. something very weird. Um, it does look um, alphabetical because yes. under zero and then nine, we've got a uh, hello Akbar. But yeah. if we go to nine, nine, we see Cyrillic. So, um, so it does seem to be maybe the most popular 100, no, yeah, zero to 10. So popular, most popular 110 hashtags, 110 pages. I don't know. I have no clue. I've like clicked around it a bunch of times, tried to look to see if the numbers made any sense in the URL or source code or user IDs or I cannot figure it out because indeed the hashtags do seem alphabetical, but in this case it's from D I and then D R. So what happened between everything in between? I mean, there must be a hashtag with D A. No, you uh, go to two, with D A. And and page two four because that was page two two. So you obviously go to page two four then. But yeah, I, th I think that's uh, for something else. Uh, to have a look at. I think this is a nice capture the flag. The yep. first one who solves it is the oh, winner. Page, uh, page, <laughs> um, technically, that uh, page two three indeed starts again with dreams and continues all the way to dunya kadin etc. Something. Oh true. yeah, I see this. You figured it out so quickly. Oh, but again, yeah. what, what are we looking at? Are these all <laughs> the Instagram hashtags possible or? No, 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 no. I, I think these are maybe the most popular ones, but I'm yeah. not sure. It, um, maybe um, I'm going to I'm going to do something. I'm going to make a few screen caps and I'm going to revisit them uh, every couple of weeks and see whether ah. they change. Yeah. Great. That would be very interesting. I'd love to see, hear what you will be finding out, Sector. Yeah, I, I would too, because it, it does seem to be sometimes if you press the zero, zero, that it starts with a numeric value, or and then it goes to one. So it's the 02, 04, 05, whatever it is. So it does seem to have some rational alphanumeric pattern, but I don't understand why you'd have to go through and click one and then the other thing. So uh, yeah, time? No, maybe? I don't know. Some, okay. Interesting. Uh, so that's the uh, the Instagram uh, rabbit hole portion of the show. Uh, so we'll we'll go into some other stuff now. And actually, <laughs> it looks like we're probably going to be wrapping up here pretty quick here. Just wanted to um, make sure we, we we get into some other stuff before we have to get out of here. Are there any other questions? Anything else from the audience or anybody else from OSINT curious uh, that we didn't get to? Just want to make sure we give everyone. Uh -huh. I really want to have a look at uh, what SumDev built and put out last week. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The, the uh, Orbit tool. Did I skip that? Or maybe I just put that somewhere else. So, yeah, SumDev, who is an awesome uh, OSINT dev creator, created a project called Orbit. Yeah. And we'll pull that up here real quick. That is a, visual, uh, a Bitcoin or a blockchain visualizer. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, yeah, I, I, try, I, I tried it and I played with it and I really like it because it gives you a really quick way to pivot into, let's say, uh, numerous wallets or transactions and make some sense of it. Yeah. And, and I've got news. Um, graphical interface again. So it works really well. And I think he made another fine tool and he also uh, made some export functions on it so you can export it to your multigo or uh, graphml or whatever you get the you want to play with it and i think he even asked for people so listeners audience if you have input um hit some up. he really wants to tweak this tool and i think um looking at the um, digital currency community there's a real demand for tools like this to make sense of all the scammers and all the other stuff that's going around uh, giving 
cryptocurrency is a bad name or a bad image. So this is a really good tool to crawl into those um, pivot points of a certain wallet or a certain transaction, and you want to make a little bit of sense of it. Yep, agreed. Uh, sector? Yeah, no, I'm, I was just uh, going to break in earlier. Um, I can say he's, he's constantly busy with it and he's improving it. He has sped up the query times uh, because it was fairly slow, um, but he is speeding things up. And yeah, he now also has the export function for GraphML. So yeah, you can even use Gephi now to, uh, to create your own uh, graph. And it, it is absolutely an awesome first release. So really yeah. keen on seeing what uh, what else is coming up. Yeah, and and blockchain transactions or uh, you know cryptocurrency investigations is it, it's a it's a little bit of a new thing for a lot of people. Uh, you have blockchain or, or um, what are the other ones? There's there's a couple different uh, uh, tracers that we'll go through and show you like for per the wallets and per the nodes and stuff like that. What transactions have been going through? I know there was. I think it was last year when you know Bitcoin hit twenty thousand. There was a lot of scammers that were um, doing a lot of really, really good Twitter work to copy almost exactly for who they were following. You know, it was the Elon Musk and things like that, where they were saying after he posted, they would post right after and say, "Hey, send me two bitcoins, and I'll send you five thousand bitcoins afterwards." And people got taken by those scams, and so it's important to go through and, and, and especially for OSINT, know that we've got tools that are coming out that regardless of how long it takes for us to go through and figure out who those scammers are, a lot of that stuff is available. So through the blockchain analysis stuff, plus good old fashioned search engines, just saying, you know, who's left what wallet IDs in what forums to go through and start talking about stuff. You know, people are putting a lot of those things together, which is, is, is incredible. That's awesome. Okay. Anything else? Anyone? Did I miss anything else? I think we're good. Most of the stuff? Okay. I think we're good. Yeah. Okay. All right. I wanted to get into uh, just some of the final stuff that we wanted to go over. Uh, just for OSINT Curious itself, we do have a Patreon that we just launched a little bit ago. We've had some, some tremendous success with that. We wanted to go through and take a minute to go through and say uh, thank you to a couple people. We have Aldo. Uh, Rick Kershaw Moore, uh, Ginger T, which who's on here, so thank you. Uh, Ali Hansen and Beowulf88. Uh, really, really appreciate uh, all the support that anyone has, has given us because it, it, it means that what we're doing is, is helpful and working. So we, we really do appreciate it. Yeah, and it makes us um, stay stable for the future also. So, uh, yeah. yeah. And eventually when we get enough funds, we'll get a robot to replace me so that I don't screw up things in the beginning of the podcast. So <laughs> everything no. will be okay. Yeah. No, we, we forgive need to you, Gins. <laughs> I don't know that anyone can forgive me. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, we also, um, Kirby is, is kind of, uh, and she's not on the show either right now, but Kirby is, is, is the main force behind trying to get us submitted to South by Southwest. We put the application in. I think it goes live in August. So anyone who is here or anyone who knows us on Twitter, uh, we'll be launching our application out there just to get votes because we would love to take uh, OSINT Curious down to South by Southwest yeah. and uh, do our own unique brand of, uh, of silliness down there, which would be awesome. Yeah. We really need votes for that. Yeah. yeah. 100%. So, so we'll, we'll be asking that again, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, I believe we'll be doing it kind of the same style, but we'll, we'll see how it works out and how South by Southwest will allow us to do that. But even bringing just uh, the OSINT, the privacy, the, 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 the knowledge of verification and things like that to more of a mainstream audience, uh, South by Southwest has, has launched a lot of different projects, a lot of different music careers, and a lot of different movies as well. So we feel like this is a good space to go through and start talking to other people who may not know exactly what open source intelligence is. So this is kind of our shot to get out of the echo chamber and, and get to a live better, or not better, but a bigger audience, excuse me. So yeah, that's just something we've got working on in the, in, in the, in the future as well. Um, we did want to go through and give a huge shout out to the Billing Cat Podcast, Billing Cat Podcast, excuse me. Uh, as Nico said, he is currently working with Billing Cat. So, we, we definitely want to make sure that, that they 
are getting to the spotlight because they have done some amazing work over the last number of years in regards to verification and visual um, kind of representation of what isn't isn't happening out in the world. So they 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 do amazing amazing work, and we're very proud to have Dutch on there as well. I don't know if you want to talk about it anymore. Yep. Yep. Well, it's 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 a series of podcasts, and it's really well produced, if I might say so. We could learn a thing or two from that. It's it's like if you like the Darknet Diaries, and for, sure, for instance, it's it's almost like a, uh, if you're in a in a movie. And I like listening to podcasts all the time. And but this yeah. is like a, a whole other definition of storytelling. So yep. if you want to check it out, check it out. If you don't want to check it out, it's all good. Yeah. I just wanted to give it a shout out because it deserves a little bit of shine. Absolutely. And, and again, if you're listening to this uh, as the podcast after it comes out of the webcast, uh, we will we will send the, the notes for the Bellingcat podcast as well. But it looks like you can get it damn near anywhere from, from anything else you listen to. So if you're already listening to this and curious, this may be up your alley. So just check that out there. Uh, let's see here. I'm pretty sure that is about it. Um, let's see. We do have some some self-promotion. Uh, just want to go through and make sure that we everyone knows where they can find everybody. Um, let's start with uh, Mr. Sweeney. Where, where, where can people find you, and what what would you like to go through and just advise everyone? Uh, so the the easiest place to find me, of course, is the website uh, osintessentials.com. Uh, then there's at osintessentials on Twitter. There's a Facebook page, and as you mentioned earlier, Instagram. And I would say, you know, this is something that I just want to get all this stuff out here to as many people as possible. And I would say if anybody does, does have any suggestions, if anyone says to me, I tried that tool, it doesn't work anymore, please always contact me. This is kind of pretty much just a service for as many people as I can get it to. Uh, just a couple of things I'd like to not plug, but ask about for the future. Uh, one of the, one of the things I think is a big issue now is we te we teach people to do these awesome things and so on. And I constantly get this thing from journalists saying, well, it's great to have these skills, but the public doesn't care. One of the emerging things that I want to deal with a bit more in the, in the coming 6, 12, 18 months is delivery of conclusions, how to get people to care, how to, how to, you know, once you've debunked something, get people to notice it and get people to care about it being done. I think delivery is a, a side of it that hasn't been as well dealt with as the actual practicing of the job itself. And I think for you guys who are, I think everybody here, on the actual webcast is more technically accomplished than I am. One of the things I want to look into in the future is how to protect people against these services because I'm telling people to go to all kinds of sites and services not really knowing what's behind them and whether people are going to something that may be a security risk or compromise their, their, their online security. So I would love to be able to do this with more confidence and say to people, that site I'm sending to you, it's not going to steal all your information or whatever. Sure, sure. So I did have a question. Do you only do in-person uh, training? Do you do video, or what? What what medium do you normally focus on? Yeah, I normally do in-person simply because I just think it's more effective. Uh, it's uh, I like to be able to you know set a bunch of exercises and go around looking over people's shoulders and nudging them in the right direction because I think they learn an awful lot more that way. I do in certain cases do online stuff. I've done online stuff, for example, with groups who maybe it's not particularly safe for me to turn up there and help them out. Um, other times when, you know, I just can't be in two places at once. So yeah. I, I have done a few webinars and sort of, you know, Skype based, uh, talks and things like that. And I'm, I'm always willing and hopefully able to do those. That's awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on and, and giving us all that information. It's, it's really, Thank really you. nice yeah. to get different perspectives from a lot of different people, especially, you know, from, from a journalism perspective with the background and stuff. So that's, that's amazing. We really appreciate it. No, th I think thanks so much for having me on because, like, you know, I listen to this every I watch when I can every week. So it's uh, it's it's a privilege to be on. Thanks very much. I'm glad to have you. Yeah. Thank you. All right, Dutch, what do you got coming up here? Uh, um, we'll be speaking two days on the 30 and 31st of October at the Infosecurity.nl event. It's the largest info security event in the Netherlands. <laughs> so I'll be doing there to talks and i want to give a shout out to my buddy mika who is enjoying his holiday well yeah. sure i guess i hope i think hope hope yeah <laughs> all right sector 
Um, yeah, I, I didn't put it in the uh, in the webcasting uh, planning, but yeah, I've got two things coming up actually. Um, earlier than October, first of all, twenty uh, second of September, I will be um, at the Citizens of Evidence that is uh, organised by the Disruption Network Lab. That will be in Berlin, giving a workshop together with Emmanuel Freudenthal on. ADSB and how to build your own uh, receiver. And on the 26th of September, I will be joining the Global Investigative Journalism Conference in Hamburg, Germany, and we will be doing a live quiz time. So if you like fact checking and geolocation quizzes, and you are going to be at uh, GIJC this year, we're going to be seeing each other on the 26th. That's awesome. Pretty Live cool. quiz time. And you said, uh, so So this is the Marine and Flight Tracker, the ABDS, is, or a, I'm sorry. A ADS, ADSB, that's correct, on how to build it um, just with a Raspberry Pi, a very cheap DVB uh, receiver or USB dongle. And I'm actually going to build a f couple of different, very easy to build antennas. And we're going to have a talk and show them what the reach is and how easy it is to uh, to create them. That's awesome. Yeah, we should, we should talk later. Uh, okay, Tegna Zit. Uh, well, you can find me on Twitter, twitter.com slash Zet or technozet.com. Um, I don't have any specific shout outs, I'm afraid. Just keep watching Ocean Curious platform for the Instagram searching part two, which hopefully will be released soon. Yep. And, and and I think a lot of people know Technozet's work in regards to our Start Me page and all the links that she has. Uh, it's it's an amazing resource as well. So we want to thank you for for putting that up and and keep that going. You're I'm welcome. Sure I'm that, currently uh, in the process of redesigning, but it's yeah, taking a little yeah. bit longer than I was planning. But hopefully, we will be releasing for the end of the summer, and you will be able to search through all of the tools because I have uh, difficulties finding the tools I need. Yeah. I put descriptions on every tool I post up there. And See, sometimes I know problems. I've got this tool that's very helpful for Instagram for finding yeah. specific content, but I don't know the name. But I cannot search for everything that I put in the description. Sure. So we're building this website and hopefully you will be able to just type in I will need a tool to retrieve Facebook friends and you will get all of the results matching what you're searching for. So are you just going to tag all the tools or all the links that you have and associate yes. it like that? That's going awesome. A That's a really good work, idea. But you will be Ooh. able to search for all of my content that I collected over the years. Technizek, yeah. if I can uh, be so free to give you a little hint, you should start a weekly blog. You know why? You can just Google Doc your own links. <laughs> <laughs> only I have time, Sexer. No. time. No, no that's, that's next. I We're going to work on the time thing. We're going <laughs> to. I'd mean, like to extend my 24 hour day into like a 72 hour day or something. Sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, that, that would actually be great. I could get a lot of <laughs> everything done then. Yeah. Yeah. Either that or we get to work on cloning. And All that's right, there true. you go. That's true. <laughs> See, we're already brainstorming ideas, I tell you. Okay, all right. Uh, we are just about at time, so I want to go through and thank you to all the participants today. Thank you for all the OSINT Curious webcast people that are showed up. Uh, everyone else in the chat, thank you so much for taking time out to come out and talk to us, ask us questions. Uh, again, thank you to uh, Mr. Sweeney for coming out and, and, and coming. You know, I, I know there's some time differences and stuff, so we really appreciate everyone showing up. Um, and I'll say it, you know, stay OSINT curious, and we'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye. Thank you.